Good morning, everybody. Glad to have you here. If you will, like, share, or comment on the post. And then if you'd like, join me in the book of Acts in chapter 25. And we will continue uh, with this uh, journey uh, that Paul is making through the uh, through the Roman court system. We'll be looking at verse 9 today and uh, seeing how things are going in uh, in this trip. Uh, we see now verse 9. Again, Paul has uh, presented his defense in verse 8 that he wasn't guilty of anything uh, against the Jews, against the Romans, or the temple. Uh, the, basically the three powers uh, of the land at that time. And so he says, I haven't done anything. And so now look at verse 9, an interesting uh, turn of events here. It says, but Festus, wishing to do Jews a favor, said to Paul, do you wish to go up to Jerusalem and there be tried on these charges before me? Paul wishing, Paul, would you wish, Festus wishing, um, got a lot of wishing going on here concerning a man's uh, security, man's freedom, possibly even uh, a man's life. And uh, there's a valuable lesson uh, that we can take away in our personal life uh, from Festus. Festus wishing to do the Jews a favor. Uh, not Festus obeying the law or Festus um, being a righteous man, but Festus wishing to get on the good side of the Jews, wishing to do them a favor. And he knows, uh, you can tell by his question, that he knows he has no uh, real authority in this matter because he says uh, to Paul, do you wish to go to Jerusalem and be tried on these charges? And so uh, he, he understands that he doesn't really have uh, the legal grounds to send uh, Paul back to Jerusalem. So he has to uh, ask him if, uh, if he wants. And what a, uh, what a sad picture here of, of a man in authority. Um, but um, sadly, it's a pretty common uh, picture that we see even in uh, government and authority uh, today that uh, Festus uh, knew um, he, he has really doesn't have any grounds here that Paul uh, is, uh, is innocent of those charges. Um, and so he's trying to uh, make some kind of compromise. Uh, he knows the truth. He knows that uh, Paul is not guilty. We see that in verse uh, verses uh, 10. And again, later in this chapter, we'll see it again. Paul, Festus knows uh, that Paul is innocent and should be set free. And if anything, uh, the Jewish leaders should be brought up on charges for, uh, for making these unjust allegations against a, a Roman, uh, Roman citizen. But he also knows uh, that he's got to make nice with the Jews because, uh, again, one thing uh, that the Roman government, that Caesar just absolutely could not uh, tolerate, wouldn't stand, was uh, rebellion and uprising in one of his territories. And he would ultimately hold the Roman governor uh, responsible. So if the Jews started um, a rebellion, rising up, it would eventually get to Caesar, and Festus would take the fall for it. And so he, he's got to figure out a way uh, to make everybody happy. And I think most of us know that when you try to make everybody happy, generally you end up making everybody angry. And so he comes up with this idea uh, that he could get this off of his hands, get it uh, out of, uh, keep him from being responsible, uh, if he could just get this trial moved to Jerusalem. Uh, and there in Jerusalem, he could declare uh, Paul innocent uh, for the charges that they were making, uh, that he was trying to be, a, that he was a traitor towards Rome. Um, and then uh, the two religious charges about the temple, um, he could hand those over to the Jews and let them handle it themselves. And uh, that once he took care of the civil case, um, he could take care of that. Uh, but then these issues of the temple and preaching against uh, the Jewish law, those kind of things, just let the Jews handle that um, on their own. And what we see here, uh, sadly, again, is a common picture that we still see, uh, not only in politics, not only with, uh, with government authorities, but with uh, with, with people in general, uh, that we try to find a way uh, to not have to stand up for what we know in our heart 
uh, is right. Um, we choose popularity. We often talk about peer pressure uh, in regards to teenagers. Uh, the truth is I don't think we ever uh, get old enough that we're not uh, confronted with the issue uh, of peer pressure, trying to do the thing that will make uh, the most people happy, trying to, uh, to choose popularity uh, over doing uh, the right thing. Uh, and ultimately, uh, Festus is just going to, he's trying to choose a compromise instead of doing what was right. Again, the right thing would have been for Festus to say he hasn't broken the law. He hasn't done anything that deserves any of this. Let him go and y'all leave him alone. Uh, but he, he chose what he hoped would be the path of least resistance. And uh, we may very well be faced with those kinds of decisions today. Uh, in, uh, in our culture, in our world today, uh, it's getting much harder to stand up for what's right, standing up for the Word of God, standing up for truth and righteousness. It's getting harder uh, if, you're, if you're still uh, in the workplace um, where you have to work with people. It's getting so much more difficult uh, to, uh, to deal with uh, those kinds of decisions. And often, um, even believers will choose comfort, will choose popularity, We'll choose financial gain um, over uh, being obedient and choosing righteousness. You think about that today. As you make decisions, as you make your choices, uh, and, and we make thousands of decisions and choices every day, some of them far more important than others, are you making the decision that is right, that honors God, or are you making a decision purely out of popularity um, and uh, making a compromise. Think about it. We'll see you here tomorrow morning.